First of all, thank you. Thank you for all coming out. Thank you to the Hanson Public Library, the Hanson Library Foundation for having me. And we're all here, of course, to celebrate the movies, right? Okay. So who here loves the movies? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, now the next question, the risky one. I have to keep my hands on for this one, disclaimer. How many of us can say that we have seen all nine Best Picture nominees? <laughs> I'm two and a half away. I still have to see Ford versus Ferrari, and I still have to see Jojo Rabbit, and I'm about halfway through watching The Irishman. I've been working on that one now for about three and a half weeks. <laughs> so I'm watching it in 20, 30 minute chunks wherever I can, usually in between loads of laundry, because it's the only way to do a three and a half hour movie, right? <laughs> so, but be that as it may, here they all are. 2019's Best Picture nominees, and Probably the best place to begin is to consider the following. Film, the power of cinema. What does it do? What can it do for us? What does it sometimes fail to do? And those are a lot of the questions that Academy voters ask themselves when they determine for themselves what they personally rank as among the best that the film industry has churned out over the past, over the past calendar year. And this year, they have settled upon this list of nine nominees. We have The Irishman at the top left-hand corner, that three and a half hour long you know, live action short I told you about, um, directed by Martin Scorsese and reuniting for the first time in decades Joe Pesci, Al Pacino, and Robert De Niro, and let's throw in Ray Romano as well, and now we're talking cast. <laughs> top middle, you have Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Quentin Tarantino's ninth film, which is the story of a washed up television actor played by Leo DiCaprio and his stuntman played by Brad Pitt. Throw in the backdrop of the summer of 1969, reimagine what could have been with, of all things, the Charles Manson murders, and then you have Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Top right, you have 1917. I don't want to use the word traditional, but it's probably more of a uh, typically seen Best Picture nominee. It is a war film, but it is one of the few World War I themed films that has been honored by the Academy uh, pretty much since the dawn of time. Uh, the last time there was a World War I themed Best Picture nominee was back in 2012. Anybody remember Spielberg's film War Horse? That was the most recent one. The last time that a World War I themed movie won Best Picture, we have to go all the way back to 1930 to All Quiet on the Western Front. <laughs> so, so maybe World War I is due its recognition. <laughs> Who knows? Underneath that, we have Joker. These, not the spin off film, the standalone film, the origin story of this iconic Batman villain. And of course, Joaquin Phoenix, who has won pretty much every precursor award so far the Golden Globe, the SAG Award. He is widely considered to be the shoe in for the Best Actor Award this year. Bottom right hand corner, you have Little Women, directed by Greta Gerwig. Starring Saoirse Ronan, that is how you pronounce her name, by the way, it is Saoirse. <laughs> Saoirse Ronan, Emma Watson, Florence Pugh, and Laura Dern as Mami. Then you have Jojo Rabbit. Every year, <laughs> there always has to be, I don't want to say there has to be, but there typically is a film in the list of nominees that tends to be the, the quirkier film, the more unusual one. And Jojo Rabbit this year, 
fits that bill to a T. It's billed as an anti-hate satire. It's the story of a young boy who is a, he is a, a Hitler youth, he is a Nazi, and he is shocked to learn that his mother has been harboring a young Jewish girl in their attic, or maybe it's their basement. And throughout the film, his imaginary friend is Hitler himself. And it's a dark comedy, it's billed as an anti-hate satire, and I would imagine it's a tough sell. I can't imagine being the one to walk into the studio executive office and saying, hey boss, I have a great idea for a movie. Here, here's my screenplay, take a look. I don't know. Hitler, by the way, is played by the film's director. Um, and then in the bottom left-hand corner, you have Ford versus Ferrari. Christian Bale and Matt Damon. More than a race car movie, but all the images that you have online pretty much point to that uh, particular description. And then lastly, no, I'm sorry, not lastly, second to last, you have Marriage Story, streaming on Netflix. Adam Driver, Scarlett Johansson, Laura Dern, and that is, it's been, I think, unfairly billed as an updated Kramer versus Kramer. I think it's more, there's more to it than just that, but it's the similar concept. You have the story of a dissolving marriage. There is a young boy, young child involved, feeling as if he's pulled in both directions between mother and father. Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson, they're both nominated in the leading categories for this film. And then in the center, you have a film that has made Oscar history. The sixth film in all of Oscar history to be nominated for both Best Motion Picture of the Year as well as Best International Picture, and that is Parasite. So, and it's the first South Korean film ever to make these categories as well. So there you have it, the nine Oscar nominees, the Best Picture nominees, and with that said, the Oscars. Probably should mention when they're on, shouldn't I? <laughs> they are on a week from Sunday. We are only days away. So we're nine days away from the 92nd Annual Academy Awards, live on ABC, 8.30 p.m., with no host. <laughs> so this will be the second year when there has not been a host. And last year, there was some question as to whether or not this was going to work. Because last year, if you recall, Kevin Hart, he was the uh, host for about two weeks. And then that didn't work out. And that brings us now to the interactive portion of tonight's program. So, you know, shut out your guesses here. Out of these five people, who would you say holds the record for hosting the most number of times? Billy Crystal, okay, Bob Hope we have. Any Johnny Carsons? No. Whoopi Goldbergs, Jimmy Kimmels. So it comes down to Billy Crystal and Bob Hope? All right. Bob Hope it is. <laughs> Bob Hope. Bob Hope has hosted the Academy Awards a staggering 18 times between 1940 and 1978. I should mention that this is radio and television combined, because the Oscars weren't on television until the early 50s, but 18 times the host of the MC of the, uh, of the ceremony. By contrast, Billy Crystal, who comes in second, he has hosted a total of nine, so that's you know, cutting the number in half. Johnny Carson five times, Whoopi Goldberg four, Jimmy Kimmel twice. Other two timers include Ellen DeGeneres, Chris Rock, and Jimmy, uh, Jimmy uh, I almost said Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> um, Chris Rock, Ellen DeGeneres, and John Stewart. <laughs> John Stewart. So, all right. So like I said, no host this year. What could possibly go wrong, right? Well, <laughs> Does anybody remember the Oscars of 1989? Oh, how could you forget? This was the year that Rob Lowe was dancing with Snow White for the opening number. <laughs> it's on YouTube. If you want to spend a few minutes torturing yourself, just look it up. They decided, without a host this year, they decided that it would be nice if they were to have an unknown actress get her big break into show business by making a guest appearance at the Academy Awards. This was going to be for her, you know, catapulting into the big time. So they dressed her up as Snow White, and she went around, the mannerisms, the voice and everything. The ceremony opens, and she's making her way through the audience and asking different celebrities in the audience, oh, can you tell me where the Oscars are? And it's the shivers go up and down your spine after about three seconds. And then lo and behold, along comes Rob Lowe, and conveniently he has two microphones, he hands one to her, and they burst into a medley of 50s rock classics. So, and by the way, I mean, 
he's no singer. <laughs> not that I am, but uh, yeah, I'm not the one on television <laughs> at the Academy Awards. So, so that was uh, one of the few times they went without a host. And so God help us all if they go in this direction, right? Well, as soon as this opening ended, the first presenter walked onto the stage, Lily Tomlin. Who offered a little bit of uh, a little bit of her own uh, input as far as how she thinks it went? She introduces herself and she says, "More than a billion and a half people just watched that, and at this very moment, they're trying to make sense of it." <laughs> Here we are, 32 years later, and I think we're still trying to make sense of it. <laughs> so, all right. Well, this year, a record number of Academy members are voting for the best motion picture of the year. Now the setup of the Academy, it's very complicated. We could be here all night if I were to try to explain it all. Basically, there are how many members of the Academy, first of all, would you say? So, so we have, in case uh, those in the back, uh, 1,209, 7,902, 8,469. So, so. And? See. <laughs> see it is. <laughs> so, in the Academy, the, the number of voting members of the Academy, 8,469. The only category that they all vote in is Best Motion Picture of the Year. So uh, otherwise, for all of the other categories, it depends on whether or not you are officially a member of that branch, if you're in the acting branch, if you're in the hair and makeup branch, if you're in the sound effects or the visual effects branch, I mean, and on and on and on. So the one category that they all come together is the best motion picture of the year, and even that is not a straightforward process. So they work on a preferential ballot system, so they list in ranking order their top choice, the number two choice, the number three choice, and then the company they hire to go through all of the ballots. They go through all the number one choices, tallied up. They go through all the number two choices, they tally it up, and then they eliminate along the way as far as what the totals are. It is long and complicated and frankly boring. So I couldn't even I couldn't even sit in that room for ten minutes trying to figure all of those ballots out. Especially since half of them are electronic and half of them are on paper. So I have what I call the Mendoza movie moments. These are one of those hey did you know fun fact kind of things. Tom Hanks is up for best supporting actor for a beautiful day in the neighborhood playing Mr. Rogers. And he is a two time Academy Award winner. He won in 1993 and in 94 for Philadelphia and then Forrest Gump. And as classic as uh, Forrest Gump is, I still, to this day, I still think Morgan Freeman for Shawshank Redemption, not him really. But Forrest Gump is good. And then will this be his third win this year? If it is, then he will join this very select group of three-time winners. It's practically impossible to win more than two Academy Awards. It's practically impossible to get a second, but to get a third one, there have only been six people. Katherine Hepburn, Ingrid Bergman, Meryl Streep, you knew Meryl was gonna be in there, uh, Walter Brennan, Jack Nicholson, and Daniel Day-Lewis. So if Tom Hanks wins his third Oscar this year, he will join this very select list. So. Think of all the greats who are not on this list. You know, De Niro is not in this list. Al Pacino is not in this list. Cate Blanchett is not in this list. Uh, so, very small, very select group of people. We're talking the the upper crust here. All right. Another Mendoza movie moment I can offer you: Parasite in 1917. These two films are considered to be the two front runners. It seems to be a race between these two. I think you can probably throw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood in there too if you want a three-way race. But they, they, these are the films that are getting the most amount of, of buzz as far as the likely winners are concerned. If either one of them wins, neither one of them has any acting nominations. And this will be uh, one of the, it'll only be the 11th time, the 11th time in history that a film will win Best Picture without a single acting nomination. And with that said, these are all Best Picture winners. Which one has no acting nominations? 2008's Slumdog Millionaire, 1951's An American in Paris, 1995's Braveheart, or 2003's Lord of the Rings, Return of the King. Or all of the above. <laughs> It is all of the above. None of these movies had a single acting nomination. They all got Best Picture. They are on this list of, uh, of 10 films. 
that uh, that claimed the top prize without getting any of the any of the acting branch nods. All right, Cynthia Arivo. She is nominated in the leading category for playing Harriet Tubman in the film Harriet. She is only the third nominee ever to be nominated in the same year for acting and for songwriting. So she's nominated for leading actress and she's also nominated this year for the song she wrote for the film. That's only happened twice before. Who was the first to pull off this twofa? Was it Bing Crosby for Going My Way? Barbara Streisand for The Way We Were? Mary J. Blige for Mudbound in 2017, or Lady Gaga for A Star Is Born? Well, all three of these, uh, uh, of these people to pull off this twofer, we can eliminate A because they're all women, and the first was Mary J. Blige. Really? Two years ago for Mudbound, Mary J. Blige was the first, the very first, to be nominated for leading actress and for uh, songwriting. And then last year, Lady Gaga, she pulled off the same feat. And now for the third consecutive year, we have the same right here with, uh, with Cynthia Erivo for Harriet. All right, marriage story. If Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson, if they win in the leading categories for Marriage Story, they will join uh, a select group of people in Oscar history, leading co-stars who both won for the same film. Who was the most recent to win, the most recent pair of co-stars to win leading actor and actress for the same film? Was it Jack Nicholson and Helen Hunt in As Good As It Gets? Joaquin Phoenix and Reese Witherspoon for Walk the Line? Denzel Washington and Viola Davis for Fences, or am I playing a trick here, and is it all three? All three. All three. All three. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not hearing any A's. Does anybody say A? <laughs> because Joaquin Phoenix did not win for playing Johnny Cash in Walk the Line, and Denzel did not win for Fences. So, okay. Viola Davis won and Reese Witherspoon won, but not, not the men. So we'll see if, uh, if Driver and Johansson pull it off. So I have here a list of current nominees this year. Saoirse Ronan for Little Women, Antonio Banderas for Pain and Glory, Charlize Theron for Bombshell, Leo DiCaprio for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Who is the only first timer on the list? Yeah, I'm, I am hearing B. <laughs> it is Antonio Banderas. <laughs> I saw him on Google. I saw him on. Uh, I saw him this week. Tell us the next. This is his, his, first, his first nomination. Yeah, I saw him. Antonio. I mean, he's been around for a long time, but uh, this is his first Academy Award nomination. The Spanish film *Pain and Glory*, which is also nominated for Best International Feature. Which, by the way, up until this year, that ca that category was called Best Foreign Language Film. They renamed it this year. So from this year forward, it's now International Feature. He was on Kelly and Ryan saying that he's never been nominated. Uh, that he's never been on Kelly and Ryan this week? Yeah. yeah, saying that this is his first, celebrating his first nomination. In fact, he'll be joining his friend Tom Hanks, his former co-star in Philadelphia, at the Oscar nominees luncheon. So, Brad Pitt, who is the widely favored Best Supporting Actor winner for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. He is competing against a former co-star, Sir Anthony Hopkins, who is up for The Two Popes. So, in which of these films did these two guys co-star? Twelve Monkeys, Meet Joe Black, Inglorious Bastards, or Moneyball? Joe Black. Meet Joe Black it was. And I feel the need to say this even though it's not necessary. Um, I did not misspell Inglorious Bastards. That's the way Quentin Tarantino spelled it in the title. I don't know why. <laughs> so, I just felt the need to point that out. <laughs> so. Okay, I have here four people, and who has the most career Oscar nominations out of all of them? I should say, Walt Disney, that refers to the man, not the studio. Okay. Just for the record. Yeah. I'll say B, Johnny. Mm -hmm. Yes. Did you say C? Filmmaker Walt Disney. Is that a, uh, so Walt Disney. But this is not fair. Because Walt Disney also got 
seven miniature Oscars, each one representing one of the dwarfs. Uh. <laughs> I don't think that's fair to count, but they do. They officially, on the records, yeah, they count that. So, so Walt Disney has the most. He has a total of 59, a whopping 59 career nominations. And then John Williams is, is second. This year, John Williams is celebrating nomination number 52, a mere 52, uh, for Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, his 52nd nomination. So there he is. <laughs> Truly honored, as well he should be. The guy's a genius. <laughs> Uh, but 52 career nominations. He still has seven more to go to catch up with Walt Disney. Eight more if he wants to break Walt Disney's record. Probably not going to happen because he said that Rise of Skywalker is his last Star Wars film. <laughs> so. All right. And Saoirse Ronan, up for leading actress for Little Women. She is 25 years old, and she is celebrating her fourth nomination. Now, for nomination number four, and she's only 25. But there is still someone else who was younger than she was by four months when she hit on nomination number four. Was it Angela Lansbury, Kate Winslet, Jennifer Lawrence, or Jennifer Jones? Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence is still the record holder for, the, uh, for being the youngest to hit nomination number four. Just four months younger than Saoirse Ronan is, both at age 25. She was trying to explain to me how they say your name. Uh, Saoirse Ronan. Yeah. Saoirse Ronan's first nomination was back in 2007. She was nominated for Atonement based on the Ian McEwan book. That was her first nomination. Then she was nominated for Brooklyn in 2015. She plays an Irish immigrant. And then she was nominated two years ago for Lady Bird. And Little Women is nomination number four. Jennifer Lawrence, she had her first nomination for Winter's Bone. Then came Silver Linings Playbook. American Hustle, and then Joy. Yeah. So. Okay, and here's an interesting parallel. The 1994 version of Little Women versus the new one, the 2019. Both t 25 years apart, and both of them have a pair of acting nominees, but how's this for something that just wouldn't happen again, no matter how hard the voters tried? In both situations, the actress who plays Mommy Susan Sarandon and Laura Dern, they are nominated, competing in the same category against one of their on-screen daughters, but for a different film. In 1994, Winona Ryder was nominated for Little Women, and Susan Sarandon was also nominated, but for the movie The Client. This year, we have Florence Pugh nominated for Little Women in the same category, her on-screen mother, Laura Dern, who is nominated for Marriage Story. So, one of those crazy parallels that probably won't happen again anytime soon. All right, and Parasite. It's from South Korea. Only the sixth movie to be nominated for both Best International Feature and Best Picture. So I have here four films, Life is Beautiful from 1998, Pan's Labyrinth, Amor, and Roma, last year's Roma, which is the only one not to be nominated in both categories. Which one did not pull off that tufa? <laughs> Someone said B, Pan's Labyrinth it was. The rest, they all got nominated in both categories. And both Roma and Life is Beautiful both won what was then called Best Foreign Language Feature. And The Irishman. The Irishman, Martin Scorsese and his go-to actors, they are competing for supporting actor, Al Pacino and Joe Pesci. Their co-star, Robert De Niro, is in the Irishman, he's not nominated. He is also in another one of this year's Best Picture nominees. Uh, it's actually Joker. <laughs> he is in Joker. He plays the, uh, the late night talk show comedian in Joker. Al Pacino is in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, so I probably could have put that one in there too and you would have had the same, the same result. <clears throat> Bong Joon-ho is up for three Oscars for Parasite, producing, directing, and the screenplay. But who in Oscar history is the only person, not even Walt Disney can say this, but who is the only person who can say, yes, I have been nominated in six different categories throughout my career. Only one person has done that. So, so how many say D, Spielberg? Or C, Eastwood? Uh, Tarantino? George Clooney? 
No, no George Clooney, no, I think it's. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I feel kind of awkward now because that was actually George Clooney. <laughs> George Clooney. I'm sorry. So, George Clooney is the only person in Oscar history to be nominated in six different categories. Uh, as a producer for Best Picture, as a director, a leading and a supporting actor, he won for supporting actor for Syriana in 2005. Uh, adapted screenplay and original screenplay. He's also a Best Picture winner as a producer for Argo, and he was nominated for Good Night and Good Luck for Best Director, Leading Actor, The Descendants, and Michael Clayton. And then Screenplay, both categories, Good Night and Good Luck, as well as The Descendants. So he may be not in front of the cameras nearly as much as he used to be, but he's plenty busy. So he's not hurting. His career is going just fine. So, okay. Um, before we go any further, I just want to make sure, I don't know if it might make more sense to wait until the end and do it all at the end, but did everybody grab a raffle ticket? No. Okay. Um, actually, that's not a bad idea. Let me, okay. So I have, uh, there'll be three winners. I do have a roll of raffle tickets here. Each ticket has the same number printed on both ends, so just tear your ticket in half. You keep one half and the other half goes in that popcorn bin, and I'll just pull three winning numbers for three movie-themed door prizes, Oscar-related, of course. <laughs>